In every guitar player's life, there's eight songs that make them go from suck to sick. And I'm gonna tell you what they are right now, for me. Personally, for me. What's the first song that made me sick? I'm gonna tell you right now, it's Classical Gas by Mason Williams. I had this program called LimeWire back in the day. Some of you oldies might remember that. It was like a lime, right? It was green, and you would get on there and you would steal music from people. It was amazing. I don't know how I came upon this file, but I was blown away when I played this track. I mean, not played it, but like listened to it. I'd never heard guitar played in that way. I just thought it was so cool doing the bass and the melody and these inner notes all at the same time. It was like, this is amazing. Because up to that point, I played electric guitar, I played a little bit of like strummy acoustic stuff, and I'd been in some bands, but like, to hear the guitar played in such a full way, uh, I had never heard it before, and I thought, I need to learn how to play this song. So I spent the next like two or three weeks figuring the song out, uh, basically like doing a, an arrangement, or basically trying to copy the song. So the second piece of music that got me so sick was this thing called Remembranza by Segovia. That's right, you all know Segovia, man. He had that fat old neck and he had those sausage fingers, but it didn't stop him from writing Remembranza, one of the greatest uh, songs that I downloaded from LimeWire. I really just enjoyed this piece of music. Still, it's one of my favorite guitar songs I've ever heard. It's just got a lot of nostalgia for me. And it was sort of more uh, actually classical-ish, right? It was like a classical guitar piece written by a classical guitarist. It was definitely more involved than classical gas. Had a lot more going on with the left hand and the right hand had some really awkward positions, I remember. I stuck with that piece for a long time and it really showed me a lot. The next song is called That One Bach Cello Suite, all right? And that was also a song that I got from LimeWire. I was sailing those seas back then, I was a true pirate. I downloaded everything in sight, baby, and I'm just lucky that one of the things I downloaded was that one Bach cello suite. That's right, you know the one I'm talking about. It's the one that goes like, everyone knows that one, right? One of the cool things about that piece is it's beautiful. One of the other things that's cool about that piece is that it was written for the cello dog it wasn't written for guitar same with video game music right a lot of video game music that, that i play on my channel wasn't written for guitar and that's really good for getting your left hand and your right hand into positions that it would not normally be in it had these constant eighth notes it, it felt like a, kind of a real endurance thing for me so shout out to my boy bach uh, thank you for writing that one cello piece it was sick to play on the guitar i'm sorry i pirated it from limewire but you died a long time ago so the next thing that happened was that I learned about Augustin Barrios Mangare. Augustin Barrios Mangare. So a lot of you don't know this, my dad is and was a country songwriter. No joke, he and his writing partner had a hit song in like 92 or 93 called What Kind of Fool Do You Think I Am? Look that up on Spotify. I share DNA with this man, he's a wonderful man. But his writing partner heard that I was learning classical guitar and there was a CD that he wanted me to have, so he let me borrow the CD, and it happened to be a CD of the greatest guitar music of all time, which is that of Augustin Barrios Mangare. Don't try to fight me on it, dude. He's the best classical guitar composer, and that's an objective fact, okay? So this album was called From the Jungles of Paraguay by uh, John Williams, and I just could not believe what I was hearing. It was my favorite music I'd ever heard. And every single track, I was like, hey, dude, if I could just play one of these songs, just one of them, I'll be so happy. And one of the first ones I learned is called Julia, Florida.
Now, what was really special about this piece was just how much I loved it, honestly. It wasn't the most difficult piece of all time. It didn't have any crazy techniques. There's no tremolo, no like wild scale runs, none of that stuff. It was just like slow and beautiful. I kind of feel like it was the first piece that I really learned, that like I really got on my bones, that I worked on so much that I was really able to kind of, you know, work on my phrasing and you know work on bringing out certain melodic lines because it wasn't it wasn't so crazy it wasn't so nuts that I couldn't focus on the more nuanced aspects of music the next piece that made me so sick bro is that Vila Lobos etude number one you know the one I'm talking about the one that's all like To this day, that song is like my favorite right hand exercise. I really think it's the best right hand arpeggio practice that I ever had and still do. I'm still working on that song. I actually recently realized that I was doing something kind of weird with my right hand. So whenever I played that piece, whenever I got to the top, I played the, the high note with my A finger, it would be way louder than I wanted it to be. And I didn't know what was going on with that. And I just figured it out recently that my hand was kind of rotated like this so that my ring finger was too close to the strings and it didn't allow me for like a nice relaxed stroke of the string. So I've been using the Vila Lobos A2 number one to run up and down and make sure that all the notes are even. amazing exercise and it's a really cool piece of music. The sixth song that made me so sick at guitar is yet another Varios piece. It's the Balse number four. This piece might be my most played piece ever. And there's a few reasons for that. That initial run, that like do 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 I just thought it was so freaking cool. I was like, man, if I could play that, man, I'm a boss. If I can do that, I'm so cool. And the piece has everything, man. It's got chords, it's got runs, it's got this crazy arpeggio spot in the middle. Near the end, it's got all these really fast, like chunky block chords. And then it's got this crazy run right at the end. That song is like the best birthday party you've ever been to, man. There's confetti flying all over the place. Everyone is drunk, except for me. I don't drink. That's a fact about me. That's a fact about Sam Griffin. Exclusive here. Fact for you, baby. The seventh song that made me so good at guitar is Capriccio Arabe by Francisco Torrega. Now I think what felt different about this song was the melodic structure of it. The melodies are a lot more horizontal, I would say, than most of the Barrios melodies. There's all these wild scale runs that were super long and clearly meant to be done rest stroke, which I hadn't really done that much. Some really awkward trills between the, uh, 
the middle finger and the pinky finger and the ring finger and the pinky finger, which is like the weirdest trill of them all. It's like so awkward and there's tons of them in that song. I never really did scales. I never worked on exercises like that. So everything I learned was because of the pieces I was playing. So this particular song got me better at those kinds of scales. The eighth song that made me so sick of guitar is Una Limosna por el amor de Dios. I'm nice by Barrios, baby. Wow. I had to include a tremolo song, you know? Everybody wants to learn tremolo. I know I did. And the reason why I chose this song over Requerdos is because it's a little bit easier. A lot of the melody in Requerdos is on a string that is not the high E string. It's a lot harder to do tremolo on like the B string, for example. It's very easy for your fingers to hit the high E string and have that ring out when you don't want it to. A lot of the tremolo in Una Limosna is on that high E string. So when you're learning tremolo, I think it's fine to make it a little bit easier. It took me forever to learn it, but tremolo is one of those things that like once you get it, you got it. It's, it's, it's pretty easy once you've got it. If you listen to one Barrios piece, I would say listen to that one. And apparently that was the last one that he wrote before he died. So that's it, bro. Those are the best songs I've ever played. The ninth song that made me so sick at guitar, the one that completed my evolution, the end of my journey, is La Cathedral. And guess what? It's a Barrio song, of course. You knew it was gonna be a Barrio song. And I feel like you may be sensing a pattern here. Yes, you are correct. I really like Barrios. I could talk about that first movement, man. It's all high up. It's on those high strings, baby. It's real pretty. I could talk about that second movement with those dope ass chords and whatnot. But who cares about that when you got that third movement? Nobody cares about the first two movements, okay? The first two movements are just a vehicle to get you to the third movement, which is one of the wildest, most awesome pieces of music ever written, period, not even for guitar. This piece of music is a monster. And when I heard it for the first time, I was like, I need to learn how to play that, but I know I'm not ready. It took me a really long time to get to the point where I was able to play it. It just moves through so many different left hand positions. It's got this really, really fast right hand arpeggiation thing. There's these scale runs it breaks into. There's, there's the whole endurance aspect because it's pretty long. And I really think that the first and second movement are such a good setup to this last crazy, frantic explosion of music. That's my list, baby, that's my whole list. Those are the songs that took me from suck to sick. What's your list, bro? You could go ahead and put it down in the comments. It might be a good list. It might have songs like Teletubbies opening song, Gangster's Paradise, you know, Blue's Clues, Candy Crush opening cinematic music, Macarena on there, Blue Abba Dee Abba Da. You might have Spice Girl Wannabe, dude. I'm not gonna judge you, bro. Like, no judgment here, baby. You go ahead and leave that list in the comments below. Bro, and I really think you should just subscribe to my channel, dude. I think you should stop beating around the bush and smack that subscribe button. And while you're at it, you might as well hit the bell, dude. Everyone's doing it, okay? Everyone's hitting the bell. It's like a new dance craze. It's called hitting the bell. All right, and hit that thumbs up button. Think about the impact that you could have if you upped this video. Peace out, bro. Dude, the sixth thong, the sixth thong, the freaking the sixth song, the sixth song, the, the sixth song that made me so sick at guitar, the sixth song that made me,